The Life of Momo Yaoyorozu, My Hero Academia Momo Yaoyorozu, also known as the Everything Hero, Kriyeti, is the Vice President of Class 1A at UA High School, where she got in through official recommendations and is training there to become a pro hero. Welcome to the Amagi! In today's video, we're going over the life of Momo Yaoyorozu. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background Momo was born into a famous hero family, gaining a powerful quirk as a result. Due to the vast wealth of her family, she had access to various objects to study and practice within her home as a child, with the Russian Matryoshka dolls being her favorite tool for quirk training. Quirk Apprehension Test Arc Having gained entry to UA High through recommendations, Momo Yagirozu attends the first day of school with Class 1A. Their homeroom teacher, Shota Aizawa, immediately brings the class to the training field for a quirk apprehension test and claims that whoever comes in last will be expelled. Momo manages to score first place in the entire class while Izuku Midoriya comes in last. Shota then reveals that he was lying about expelling the last place students to make sure the students did their best. Seeing everyone's shocked reaction to the news, Momo tells them she's surprised they didn't realize that earlier and says that she should have mentioned it. Battle Trial Arc Momo answers one of present Mike's questions in English class the next morning. That afternoon, Class 1A participates in combat training for their hero basic training class taught by All Might. They meet him at Training Ground Beta after changing into their hero costumes. He splits them up into teams of two and has them simulate a hero versus villain situation. Momo ends up being paired with Minoru on Team C. That is very unfortunate, I am so sorry girl. Following the first battle trial, all Might states Tenya Ida was the best in the battle despite his team's failure. He asks the students why this is the case, and Momo responds. She replies that Tenya embraced the spirit of the trial while Ochiko let her guard down, Izuku rendered himself helpless, and Katsuki's judgment was clouded by a grudge. She goes on to say that she and her classmates must devote themselves wholeheartedly if they wish to become pro heroes. USJ Arc The next day in homeroom class, Shota tells the class they need to choose their class president. The class follows Tenya's suggestion of voting for the president and Momo gets the second most votes behind Izuku. To her dismay, she is made vice president, while Izuku becomes class president. However, when it comes time to decide who the class officers will be, Izuku decides to give his role to Tenya. This leaves Momo discouraged, because she believes that she should be the representative. Later on, Shota announces to the class that they will partake in rescue training at an outside facility. Class 1A arrives at the Unforeseen Simulation Joint, or USJ for short, where they meet the space hero, 13. 13 explains that she developed the USJ with the focus on training future heroes on using their quirks to help others. Suddenly, during 13's speech, real villains invade the facility through a warp gate. Shota fends off the villains on his own and leaves 13 to evacuate with the class. They prepare to escape, but they're cut off by the villain Kurogiri. Katsuki and Ejiro attack him, but end up dealing no damage. Kurogiri responds by warping the class to the various areas in the facility. Momo is warped to the mountain zone along with Kiyoka and Denki. She uses her quirk to create a metal staff for herself and a sword for Kiyoka to defend themselves. While they're surrounded by villains, Denki mentions that he cannot shoot out his electricity or else he'll shock the girls too. Annoyed, Kiyoka kicks him into a villain so that he can electrocute them, cause the girls get shit done. Another villain tries to get the jump on them, but Momo uses her quirk to trap him in a net and he falls into Denki's electrical field as well. Momo creates a sheet of insulation to protect herself and Kiyoka. She tells Denki he can attack without restraint, so he blasts the villains with an electric attack and ends up destroying most of Momo's shirt. And that sucks because she was already not really wearing that much to begin with. Kiyoka points this out, but Momo replies that she can simply make new clothes. Denki's quirk renders him helpless after he overuses it, leaving him open to an electric villain hiding underground. Before it's too late, the trio is saved when the pro heroes arrive at the facility. Snipe uses his quirk to shoot the villain multiple times to free Denki. Then Ectoplasm arrives to escort the students out and take the villains into custody. Afterward, Detective Tsukauchi takes Class 1A back to UA High. UA Sports Festival Arc Two days after the attack on USJ, Momo and her classmates return to school to discuss the attack. 
After Shota returns to class, the students get lectured about the importance of the upcoming UA Sports Festival. Momo mentions that she's excited about the opportunity to get scouted at the festival. For the next two weeks before the festival, Momo trains by reading up on the molecular structures of the items she can create. The day of the UA Sports Festival arrives and Momo changes into her PE clothes and prepares with her classmates in their designated waiting room. Chief Referee of the Sports Festival, the very attractive Midnight, announces the preliminaries will be an obstacle race four kilometers around the stadium, which immediately begins after the rules are explained. The students begin the race jam-packed inside a narrow corridor. Shoto freezes the tight space and gets out to an early lead, but Momo and others use their quirks to avoid it. They all reach the first obstacle, which is a blockade of giant villain bots. Momo uses her quirk to create a cannon and effectively shoots them all down to clear the path. After reaching the minefield, Momo is attacked by Minoru, who uses his quirk to stick to her back and piggyback on her all the way to the finish line. She finishes in 17th place while carrying Minoru against her will. However, this qualifies them both for the second event, the Cavalry Battle. Shota chooses Momo for his team, along with Denki and Tenya. He tells Momo that her role on the right wing provides insulation and defense for the team. She creates skates for herself and Denki so that the team can move very quickly and take advantage of Tenya's speed in front of the formation. Once the cavalry battle concludes, Team Todoroki finishes in first place and all of their members move on to the finals. A one-on-one -on -one fighting tournament. Prior to the finals, all the participants are allowed an intermission for recreational games and rest. Momo goes to get food with Kyoka, and they're both told by Denki and Minoru that they must dress up as cheerleaders for the cheer battle. Momo believes them and makes cheerleading outfits for the girls in Class 1A, but this turns out to just be a prank from the boys. I still don't know why they never got revenge for that. Momo ends up matched against Fumikage for the sixth battle. The first round sixth fight eventually arrives and Momo takes the stage to fight Fumikage. She ponders over a strategy to defend herself by creating a shield, but she's suddenly interrupted when the battle suddenly starts. Fumikage calls Dark Shadow to attack immediately, and Momo blocks it with a shield just like she planned. She tries to follow up by making a weapon, but Dark Shadow keeps pressuring her by attacking her shield repeatedly. Momo creates a metal staff and prepares to counterattack until Midnight points out that she's pushed out of bounds. Fumikage is named the victor in the quickly ended bout, greatly disappointing Momo. After Katsuki wins the sports festival, Momo joins her peers for the closing ceremony. Versus Hero Killer Arc Class resumes in UA two days after the sports festival. Momo joins her class in learning about hero informatics during homeroom. Shota reveals the pro hero draft results, with Momo receiving 108 offers from pros. That is my girl. Midnight joins the class to help the students choose their hero names. Momo chooses the moniker everything hero, Createe. When the internship week arrives, Momo and her class meet at the train station. Momo chooses Uwabami's hero office to intern at along with Itsuka Kendo from Class 1B. They both arrive in the middle of Uwabami shooting a commercial. Itsuka mentions that she was hoping for something a bit more heroic than that, but Momo emphatically replies that garnering popularity is unavoidable as a hero, and she will take any lesson Uwabami has for them. Itsuka takes note of Momo's enthusiasm and then asks if there's anything else they could do during the commercial. Uwabami responds by admitting that the main reason she chose them as interns is that because they're both cute, making Momo and Itsuka slightly taken aback by their new mentor's response. They later accompany Uwabami to one of her photo shoots. Itsuka mentions how she feels more like an entourage than an intern. Momo replies that there must be some kind of lesson they're missing, but Itsuka believes Momo is in denial, which is probably true. A few days later, Itsuka and Momo appear in a commercial for Uneri Hairspray with Uwabami. The snake hero shows them both a demo tape of the ad, but Momo appears to only be embarrassed by this. Uwabami decides to take them both on patrol afterward, much to their excitement. Final Exams Arc One week prior to final exams, Denki and Mina discuss how worried they are for the written portion. Momo placed first in the midterms and says that she's more than willing to help them study. Unlike them, she's much more worried about the practical portion. Kiyoka, Hanta, and Mashirao ask for her help as well. They all eventually meet up at the Yaoyorozu's giant, fancy estate, where Momo helps them study. Thanks to her guidance, Denki and Mina feel they do well on the three days of written tests. The day of the practical arrives following the three days of written tests, and Class 1A meets up with many of the teachers at the central plaza of the exam arena. The students believe they'll be fighting villain bots for the finals, so Kyoka asks Momo why so many teachers need to be present. 
Shota and Principal Nezu reveal that this actually won't be the case. Momo is surprised that the teachers are changing the format for the first time. Nezu explains that in order to better prepare the students for real-life encounters with villains, they will be paired off and matched up against one of the teachers. Momo and Shoto are paired up against Shota. Shoto explains his plan is for Momo to create small objects so once she's unable to keep producing them, they will know Shota is close by. Shoto plans to draw him in so Momo can run through the escape gate and tells her to stay close to him until then. Momo reluctantly goes along with it since she's lost confidence in her own ability to make decisions. She begins making Matryoshka dolls and praises Shoto for his quirk thinking, telling him that although they were both let in on recommendations, Shoto's shown more practical skills for being a pro hero. Shoto interrupts when he notices Momo stopped producing the dolls. She apologizes, but it's too late as Shota has already found them both. Momo runs away on Shoto's command, starting to panic, and several indecisive thoughts run through her head. Her lack of confidence is even evident to Shota himself, who quickly catches up to her. He uses his capturing weapon to grab her arm, but she notices her quirk isn't erased and uses it to free herself. She runs in the opposite direction back towards Shoto. She finds him hanging from a light post, restrained by Shota's capturing weapon. She apologizes, but Shota warns her that Shota is fast approaching. She begins to panic again, unable to decide whether to run or save Shoto. Shoto encourages her to trust her instincts because he believes she's better at leading their team than he is. He even admits that he voted for her to be class president because he felt she would be best at leading the class. Shoto's encouragement helps Momo believe in herself and she realizes how disgraceful she's been acting. And that was also the moment that I started shipping those two characters. Shota eventually reaches them and asks if Momo's given up. She responds that she hasn't and warns Shoto to close his eyes. She throws the dolls at Shota and he hits them, triggering the flash bombs inside them. Momo uses the opening to free Shoto from his restraints and announces that she does have a plan to take advantage of Shota's weakness. Just as Momo expects, Shoto's quirk returns to him in time for him to use his heaven-piercing ice wall technique to block off Shoto's pursuit of them. They run from behind the ice wall wearing cloaks. Shota attacks them, but the upper halves are only mannequins, and a catapult was hidden under the cloak as well. Momo tries to trigger it and shoot the cloth at Shota, but she misses. Shota backs off anyway, giving her a chance to trigger it. She orders Shoto to blast his flames and explains that the weapon is made of nitino alloy, and when it's heated, it returns to its original shape instantly. This traps Shota in an instant, allowing Momo and Shoto to handcuff him and pass the exam. Shoto mentions that her plan went a bit too smoothly. Momo replies that she messed up by missing the initial trigger and believes that Shota may have let them win. Shoto explains that he was simply distancing himself from Shoto since he was still covered with a cloth and this is what led him directly into her trap. Shoto realizes it was a matter of timing all along and thanks Momo. She's overwhelmed with emotion and begins to cry. Shoto asks what's wrong but she tells him it's nothing. Momo watches the remaining exams from the monitoring room. Class 1A returns to homeroom class following the conclusion of finals. They're given the next day off and Shota reveals that everyone will be going to training camp in the woods over summer break. Most of Class 1A decides to go shopping together at the Kiyashi Ward shopping mall to buy necessities for the Forest Lodge. Forest Training Camp Arc Summer break begins and Class 1A rides a bus to a forest reserve belonging to the hero team, the Wild Wild Pussycats. Pixie Bob and Mandalay introduce themselves and challenge the students to reach base camp past the forest in three hours. When most of Momo's peers refuse, she and her class are forcibly thrown into Beast's Forest by Pixie Bob's quirk. Well over their time limit, Class 1A arrives at the base camp exhausted and battered. Mandalay reveals the time limit was the expectancy for actual heroes, not the students. Training begins the next day. Momo trains her quirk by constantly eating sweets while creating dolls at the same time. Later that day, the students are tasked with cooking curry for themselves. Mina and Ochiko ask Shoto to light the fire for their oven. Momo comments that they shouldn't rely on him and they need to learn to make fires for themselves. She then creates a torch lighter to light her oven. Following the next day of training, Momo is paired up with Yuga for a test of courage presented by the Pussycats. Class 1A students traverse the forest while Class 1B students try and scare them in the dark. Their fun event is interrupted by the arrival of the League of Villains Vanguard Action Squad. The forest is filled with poison gas. Momo creates gas masks and rushes through the forest, handing them out to all the students. She joins up with Yosetsu so he can guide her to the students in Class 1B. 
Momo leaves Yuga behind to watch over Kyoka and Toru, who have both been poisoned. A rampaging Nomu eventually attacks Momo and Yosetsu. Momo suffers a serious head injury, and she wakes up to Yosetsu carrying her while running away from the monster. Nomu is recalled by Dabi before it gets the chance to kill the students. Momo surmises that the villains have likely captured Katsuki and makes a tracking device for Yosetsu to stick to Nomu with his quirk. The Vanguard Action Squad successfully captures Katsuki and escapes with most of their members. Hideout Raid Arc Momo is taken to the hospital and treated for her injuries. After recovering, she meets with All Might and Detective Tsukauchi in her hospital room. She tells them about the tracking device and gives them a receiver to track the signal. All Might commends her judgment and promises to handle the situation himself. The next evening, Shoto and Ejiro wait for Izuku and Momo. Izuku and Momo arrive, but before Momo can speak, Tenya appears. He's angry that they're about to repeat the same mistake he made at Hosu. Despite Izuku knowing that breaking the rules is against the law, Tenya punches Izuku in the face. Tenya is angry and frustrated that they're not taking his concerns, feelings, and worry into consideration. Tenya says that he doesn't want to see Izuku or any of them land up with several injuries. Shota tells Tenya that they will not engage the villains in combat, while Ejiro states that their rescue will be covert. Momo along with Izuku, Ejiro, Tenya, and Shoto travel by train to the city where Momo's tracking device detects the villain with her button beacon. After putting on disguises, they head towards the League of Villains hideout. They continue towards the place that Momo's tracking device is detecting. After waiting for a while near the place, Momo notes that the villains have made no movements and states the possibility of Katsuki not being in the place at all, while Tenya reminds them that if he sees any in combat, he will not hesitate to stop them. Afterwards, Momo, Tenya, Shoto, Ejiro, and Izuku prepare to infiltrate the supposed League of Villains hideout. The group go to the back of the hideout and see a window. Momo acts as recon, while Izuku and Ejiro see what is inside with the night vision goggles Ejiro brought along. Suddenly, Mount Lady destroys the front of the warehouse, which shocks Momo. Seeing that the pro heroes are at the warehouse, Momo and the group assume that All Might is with Katsuki as they are speaking and decide to head home. Suddenly, the entire warehouse is completely destroyed by a man along with the surrounding area being significantly damaged. She was paralyzed by fear due to All For One's overwhelming presence and is unable to move. As the battle between All Might, All For One, Katsuki, and the League of Villains continue, Izuku comes up with an idea and explains his plan to Momo and the group. She watches as Izuku, Ejiro, and Tenya enact the plan Izuku came up with, which allows them to rescue Katsuki. Seeing that Izuku, Ejiro, and Tenya have succeeded in rescuing Katsuki, Shoto and Momo begin escaping from the battlefield. Shoto later phones Izuku and finds out that him and his group are at the train station. After All Might defeats All for One, Momo and Shoto meet up with Izuku and his group. They take Katsuki to a police station for his safety, and afterwards, Momo goes home. Provisional Hero License Exam Arc Following Katsuki's rescue in the retirement of All Might, Nezu ordered the construction of the Height Alliance, buildings to house the students and thus protect them. When Class 1A is introduced to their dorms, Shota Aizawa states that they must start preparing to get Provisional Hero licenses like they had planned to during the training camp. Before they can enter, Shota reads the riot act against Izuku, Tenya, Momo, Ejiro, and Shoto for participating in the Katsuki Bakugo rescue mission, breaking the rules in the process, and the others who did nothing to stop them from doing it through the proper channels, stating that aside from Katsuki, Toru, and Kyoka, he would have expelled all of them for their actions if it weren't for All Might's sudden retirement. Shota advises the five who went to Kamino Ward to go through the proper procedures next time, which will restore the trust between them. Momo and the other students explore the dorms, and she comments that her room is smaller than her at-home closet. Ah, rich girl problems. The next day, Class 1A begins their school life anew. In Class 1A's room, Shota mentions that their first objective will be earning their Provisional Hero Licenses. To prepare for the Provisional Hero License exam, Class 1A students will create at least two signature super moves that they will use in combat, with his help and that of Cementos, Ectoplasm, and Midnight. She mentions she's having trouble performing the special move that she has in mind. The day of the licensing exam arrives, and Class 1A travels to the National Dagoba Arena. There, they meet students from Shiketsu High School and Ketsubutsu Academy High School. The exam participants all gather to hear the rules of the exam. As the exam starts, the rest of the schools will attack UA at once. However, Class 1A is able to defend themselves thanks to their ultimate moves. Momo creates a shield to protect Toru, Tsuyu, and herself. 
Yoshindo tells his fellow classmates that he will shatter their solid defense and use his vibrate quirk on the ground, attacking with his super move Tremoring Earth, which completely shatters the ground and causes the members of Class 1A to disperse. Momo regroups with Kiyoka, Tsuyu, and Mezo. They go to the city area and enter a building after failing to find the rest of their classmates. However, once there, they fall into an ambush prepared by Psycho and Telly from Seiai Academy. Putting Psycho's plan into action, her classmates trap the four in a room, closing it completely and sealing off Mega and Kyoka's quirks that are good for detecting people. Momo realizes that she and the others are dealing with highly intelligent opponents who have been able to correctly predict all of their moves thus far. A Seiai student welds one of the doors to the hallway shut, leaving only one door for the UA students. Momo predicts that their opponents are behind that door and that it would be dangerous for them to try and break through. Momo comes up with a plan. After reading her book, she creates four headphones and a large amp. Psycho readies her abilities to storm the room, but is surprised when her rival students counter with a high-frequency sonic wave attack, knocking out all the Seiai students except Psycho. Psycho, hiding behind the door, grabs Momo back into the hallway and locks the doors behind her. Momo creates a pair of handcuffs to restrain one of Psycho's arms, and as Psycho attacks with her other arm, Momo's friends break through the door and Suyu restrains Psycho's other arm with her tongue. After questioning why Momo's friends would return to help her when she surely would have been defeated, Psycho admits defeat. Having knocked out at least enough Seiai students for all of them to pass, the four UA students head for the winner's waiting room. After a while, the rest of Class 1A pass their first qualifier test. The qualifiers are informed of the imminent start of the second part of the exam, in which the students will have to save the largest number of fake victims in a given period of time. Momo is in charge of leading a group of her classmates, planning the rescue operations. Momo finds a man trapped beneath the debris and rushes in to help by removing the rubble, but she's stopped because there's an imbalance in the debris. Momo creates metal pillars and Hantasero traps them together, reinforcing the wall. Ochiko begins clearing out the rubble. The grandpa finds Momo, Ochiko, Hanta, and Rikido's rescue maneuvers to be not too shabby. Due to her good work and coordination with her classmates, Momo passes the exam with 94 points, receiving her hero provisional license. Shie Hasaikai Arc The next day of the provisional hero license exam, Shota tells Class 1A about hero work studies. Hero activities done off campus, saying that it's a more formalized version of the field training they did with the pro heroes before. Three days later, Shota introduces Class 1A to the people who will teach them about hero internships the third-year students who rank among the top of the UA students known as the Big Three, Mirio Togata, Tamaki Amajiki, and Nejire Hado. The personalities of the three students leave Class 1A confused, to say the least, and they get even more confused when Mirio challenges them all to a fight. At Gym Gamma, Mirio tells Class 1A to attack him whenever and wherever they want. Momo, along with her classmates, tries to fight him, but thanks to his quirk permeation, Mirio easily defeats all the students of Class 1A. As Class 1A recovers, Mirio states that the reason he wanted to fight Class 1A is to show the experience he gained from the hero work studies. Thanks to that, Mirio was able to make his quirk more powerful and reach the top. Class 1A applauds Mirio's speech and they realize what the work study could do for their skills. Remedial Course Arc Weeks later, Momo sees the news about the police raid at the base of Shie Hisaikai, a raid in which Izuku, Ejiro, Ochiko, and Suyu participated, and in which there were some casualties. When they return to their dormitories at the school, the entirety of Class 1A checks in to make sure their classmates are doing okay, physically and mentally, after their mission. Momo offers to make them herbal tea and help them feel better. UA School Festival Arc Shota Aizawa announces that UA High School will be having a school festival and tells Class 1A to pick out a program to perform at the festival. Tenya Ida asks ideas from Class 1A, but they do not reach an agreement. At Heights Alliance, Class 1A decides that their school festival program will be a live performance and dance with the party space. The next day, Kiyoka decides who will be the members of their musical band. Kiyoka herself will be playing the bass and will be the vocalist, Katsuki will play the drums, and Denki and Fumikagi will be the guitarists. Momo Yaoyorozu suggests playing the piano, having grown quite fond of it since her etiquette training in her childhood. Kyoka approves of Momo's choice, much to Mina's disappointment who wanted the class to dance alongside Momo. The rest of Class 1A are divided into the staging team and the dance team. Until the festival, the band team constantly practices under the lead of Kyoka. On the appointed day, the performance of Class 1A ends up being a huge success. No surprises there. Pro Hero Arc 
As November comes to a close, the Wild Wild Pussycats pay a visit to Class 1A to celebrate Ragdoll's reinstatement. Days later, at the UA dorms, Momo and her classmates watch a report of a Nomu attack and are horrified as it shows Endeavor overwhelmed by the Nomu's attack. A worried Momo looks to Shoto, who walks in to watch the scene of his injured father. After Endeavor manages to defeat High End and stands up victorious, Shoto collapses to his knees, relieved that his father is still alive. Momo is one of the classmates who approaches him to console him. Joint Training Arc When Class 1A and Class 1B face off as part of a training exercise, Momo is placed in a team with Yuga, Toru, and Fumikage being the leader. They compete against a Class 1B team formed by Kinoko Komori, Shihai Koroiro, Manga Fukidashi, and led by Itsuka Kendo in the second round of matchups. As the second round begins, Momo takes the initiative and leads her team. Fumikage sends Dark Shadow to locate the opposing team, but Dark Shadow is possessed by Shihai, who manipulates the beast into striking its master. Momo advises her teammates as to how they should deal with Shihai. She tells Yuga to use his naval buffet laser while Fumikage flies them around. This warps the shape of the shadows and takes away all Shihai's hiding spots. After foiling the 1B team's initial plan, Momo declares that even the most unexpected circumstances are within her expectations. Right as she says that, however, a mushroom sprouts on her nose. Kinoko uses her quirk to cover everything in mushrooms, hindering the movement of Momo's team by growing mushrooms all over their bodies. With ethanol, Fumikage and Toru manage to prevent them from growing mushrooms throughout their bodies. And with the help of infrared goggles from Momo's bag, Fumikage locates the Class 1B students, but is defeated due to a fungus that Kinoko caused to grow mushrooms in his windpipe. Meanwhile, Toru locates Manga and attacks him. She's about to defeat him, but in that moment, Itsuka appears and captures her in her giant grip. Momo robes Itsuka to herself while she's still attached to the cannon. Itsuka knocks her unconscious, but now she can barely move because of the great weight she carries. Class 1B comes out victorious with a 4-0 in the end of the second round of matchups. But Itsuka doesn't feel victorious, since Momo was always one step ahead of her. Before the third round starts, Itsuka accompanies Momo to the infirmary while looking on concerned. Afterwards, it's revealed that Class 1A won the entire exercise, and a relieved Momo celebrates their outstanding victory over Class 1B. Later, Classes 1A and 1B hang out together after the exercise, showing that there are no hard feelings, and happily socializing in the common area. Momo spends time talking to Itsuka. New friendship? Endeavor Agency Arc Momo expresses pity for Katsuki when the interview staff has him cut out from the interview. Later, Class 1A participates in a hero interview training taught by Mount Lady. During the mock interview, Momo talks about what she's capable of with her quirk, and the heroine congratulates her for her performance. On the night of Christmas Eve, Class 1A celebrates Christmas at Heights Alliance, and the whole class participates in a random gift exchange in their dorms. With the start of the second hero work study, Momo and Setsuna intern under the pro hero Majestic during UA High School's winter break. Paranormal Liberation War Arc Winter ends and students return from their work studies to show their progress with their quirks and skills. At Ground Alpha, the students show off their development by fighting villain bots under the supervision of All Might. Momo shows how she's improved prediction and efficiency in using her quirk during the mock battle. The months go by until it's late March. Thanks to the police investigation and its spy hawks, the Hero Public Safety Commission has found out the plans of the Paranormal Liberation Front and its allies. With this information, the commission organized a large force of pro heroes, divided in several teams to take down the villain organization. While a team of heroes raids the Jaku General Hospital, where the Nomura created, another team does the same at Gunga Mountain Villa, the front's main headquarters. Momo is a member of the Villa backup team along with some of her classmates and Class 1B students. Their mission is to provide support to the heroes who raid the Gunga Mountain Villa and prevent villains from escaping. After the raid commenced, heroes gained the upper hand, taking down many of the front's members. However, the Jaku team allowed Tomura to awaken, and he ordered Gigantomachia to come to him. This results in the giant defeating many heroes as he simply walks towards Jaku City. Midnight, along with Kamui Woods, try to put him to sleep, as Sheer Force does nothing to stop him. They're, however, stopped by Dabby and Mr. Compress, who are riding on the giant's back along with other lieutenants. Midnight lies on the ground in bad shape, and she contacts Momo through their comms, ordering her to create and give the sedative to the heroes as one of the advisors ambushed her. Momo then rallies the other students to prepare for an attack against the enemy. Momo's plans begin when she uses her quirk to create a large number of vials of undiluted sedative, giving each student a vial. 
The plan is to try to get Gigantamachia to swallow at least a 30 liter vial filled with sedative, because due to the gargantuan's sheer size, injecting the sedative via syringe would be almost impossible. Following Momo's lead, the students set the trap for Gigantamachia. As they planned, Gigantamachia steps into the student's trap and he falls to the ground. The strings covered in Minoru's orbs stick to his chin, and while the giant tries to get out, several students pull the strings to force him to open his mouth, while the other students charge at him and give him the sedative. The lieutenants of the PLF who are on Gigantomachia's back defend the monsters and themselves from the students' assault, with Dabby creating a fire barrier to prevent the students from getting close. The giant himself blows away several students with his powerful breath, but when he tries to get out of the softened earth, the bombs that Momo planted explode, causing him to sink even deeper. Several heroes come to help the students, with Mount Lady pushing Gigantomachia down on the ground to open up his mouth for the sedative to be administered. Good night, Gigantomachia. Although Gigantomachia shakes off the heroes, Ejiro Kirishima manages to throw a vial into his mouth. When he is about to crush him, Gigantomachia is attacked by the students who use various cannons created by Momo, who in turn is dedicated to driving her classmates away from the flames with the help of fireproof suits of her creation. Momo says that now that Gigantomachia has ingested the sedative, they need to make him move around so it will spread faster. She calls out to Majestic, and he flies in with several other pro heroes to take him on. However, annoyed by the constant interruptions, Gigantomachia transforms, taking on an armored appearance, and with his enormous strength, he finally manages to get out of the trap and easily defeat the heroes to continue on his way to Tomura, destroying everything in his path. As the battle against Tomura continues and the sedative finally works, Momo coordinates her teammates to rescue, aid, and assist the wounded heroes. After the battle, Momo and her classmates find Midnight's lifeless body in the forest, and all of the team tearfully mourn over the death of their teacher. Two days later, Momo and her classmates visit Shoto in his hospital room. She tells him about everything while comforting a grieving Mina after Midnight's death and holding back her own tears. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.